you know, in terms of how long it's going to take to get to a cure, uh, of course, no one really knows. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that many very good scientists are, are quite dubious that we'll ever have a cure. Um, uh, but the, the way I think about this, this whole process is, is, is highly informed by what we saw with the development of antiretroviral drugs. Uh, and I don't know, back in the mid-1980s, uh, scientists basically identified AZT as a drug that could partially block HIV replication. By itself, it didn't do much, but it stimulated a tremendous amount of collaborative research uh, involving uh, NIH, industry, patient advocates, uh, other funders, other governments, clinicians, clinical investigators, all came together very quickly and efficiently and over a period of 10 years went from that first step to combination therapy. Now I would be shocked if we did that with CURE, if we actually took um, the, the first step that, that David's provided in his work today and got to an effective combination in, in, a, in, a, in a decade, but it's at least possible, and we all think it's worth pursuing it. But my sense is, is that the barriers to a cure are far greater than the barriers that, that occurred in terms of combination therapy, and it's going to take much longer to get there. And what we're going to see over the next few years are uh, a number of, of phase one pilot type studies that, that are aimed at just identifying potential hits. Uh, none of them are likely to be curative. And then you're going to have to go from those promising results into larger, more definitive uh, uh, studies of those single agents, and then eventually into combination therapy. And that really, unless we get very lucky, is probably going to take uh, well over a decade. Uh, it's going to be quite, uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Mm -hmm.